I was like, you know, if I want to feel fulfilled in what I'm doing, like, I don't feel like I'm just here to be famous and be popular and do whatever I can to do that. What's up, everyone? Tanya here with popculture.com. And today I'm so excited to welcome the very talented, award winning singer songwriter, David Archuleta. David, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, great to, great to be with you, Tanya. Yeah. So, you know, before we get into the new music, I just want to thank you. I know that last year you released uh, Just Breathe to help raise money for COVID-19 relief efforts and the album therapy sessions about your own mental health struggles, especially during a time when we really were all relating to each other in that sort of um, aspect. And so what's it like knowing these songs have helped so many people and they continue to? Um, well, it's... I'm, I'm always, I guess it's always surprising to see how people connect to music and um, it can serve in more purposes than why you wrote it. Like you may have written it for something that you were going through personally, but then later on it can turn into something so much more like just breathe. You know, I didn't know that we were going to go through a pandemic um, when I wrote it, but when it, by the time it came out, it was right in the middle of lockdown. I shot the video just on my iPhone because we were all in isolation yeah. and that's the only camera I had um, just to remind people to be still and to, yeah, um, it was, it was just very interesting. And then that we were all going to go a little crazy during 2020 yeah. and that everybody could use a little bit of therapy with, um, and so to release the therapy sessions album, it was yeah. I'm just, uh, yeah, you just never know how things will work out. But I'm just so glad to see that it helped a lot of, it gave a lot of relief to a lot of people who, who listened. Yeah. yeah. And you know, your fans have been so supportive of you and, you know, that was, I'm wondering like, what has that meant to you, especially as a growing artist, you know, writing more music true to your own voice and what you're feeling? Um, you know, I didn't know I was, allowed to write about what I actually wanted to talk about because in the beginning, you know, it was like, well, you need to write hit songs or you need to sing hit songs and hit songs usually talk about this kind of stuff. And I was like, well, what about this song as an example? Or they're like, Oh, that's, that's like out of the ordinary. That's, that's once in a blue moon. Those are not common. So you've got to write about this kind of stuff. So I thought like, okay, I need to write about this kind of stuff. But as I got older, I realized, you know what? you know, you can even try and write those hit songs and they're not always going to be hits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, even a hit song is once in a blue moon, it seems. <laughs> or, but I was like, you know, if I want to feel fulfilled in what I'm doing, like, I don't feel like I'm just here to be famous and be mm -hmm. popular and do whatever I can to do that. Singing brings me relief. It brings me healing. And that's why I love it. So why not? try and share that with other people. Like maybe I can bring, uh, yeah, sure. Like fun stuff too. I like to do fun songs, but mm -hmm. I want to bring them healing and relief because that's why I love music. So. Yeah. It, it, it means a lot when the music speaks to you, because then you feel like you're not alone. You have all these other people who are going through the same rhythms as you. And so, you know, I do want to talk about the more fun music. I know you've got, you know, moving, which is so fantastic. It's the new fun flirty summer track that you wrote <laughs> with Nate Dodge and Michael Campbell. So tell yeah. me, like, how, did, how did the song come to be? Because the music video is so fun and you're dancing in it, too. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. But like, let me know how the song uh, came to be. Yeah. Um, so Nate Dodge, he's someone I first started working with on my therapy sessions album. He, I, he was a producer for my songs paralyzed and just breathe. And so then I'll, I, my friend, Michael, he's from Scotland, <laughs> right? Scotland. And I, I just met him online. I've never met him in person, hmm. but he's just, he would post songs that he would write. I'm like, Oh my gosh, like you're, these were really moving for me. And so I was like, why don't we get, do a writing session sometime? And he's like, sure. Yeah. And, um, but when we got in with Nate, just on like a WhatsApp call mm -hmm. face, like a video call and he started playing the track, but it was more like groovy and dancey. And it was like, I was like, I wonder if Michael will be able to 
write this kind of music. I've never heard him write this kind, but he like immediately was just like, um, he's just a gifted writer. And we came up with moving because I wanted to do something fun. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, 2020 was kind of a heavier year. It was like therapy and like Mm -hmm. mental health and healing from that and figuring myself out. And I was like, 2021, I just want to have fun after like a heavier for the world with the pandemic too. I was like, I just want to give people fun, (laughs) something a little more lighthearted. And so that was the point of moving just to get people moving and feeling good and dancey. So yeah, and I love that you have, you know, the After Hours remix, which is also so much fun. And, you know, you have these two versions now. So, you know, I noticed that a lot of the fans are listening to the remix one, but like, what was there, was there a reason why you wanted to have two versions out at the same time? Uh, just that I'm a super indecisive person. <laughs> it's okay. Because bro. I we we wrote originally the original move-in, mm-hmm. but then uh, Nate sent me an, another he was like, you know, I try, I experimented with it and I just took a completely different take on it. Uh, what do you think of this, taking it this way? And I was like, whoa, I really like this too. I'm like, but I don't know if I can go one or the other. I'm like, oh, I'm like, maybe I can have my fans vote for one. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to release both because I like both of them and yeah. I can't decide. So <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> they're both so fun. Like I know that they're, I feel like they're good for different moods. Like one is like a casual, like, you know, how, like people have like a date night outfit and then a regular casual outfit. It's kind of like that it kind of fits you. Um, so I like the music video. I think it's so fun and stylish and you're dancing, you're letting loose. So do you consider yourself a natural dancer? I don't consider myself a natural dancer, no. <laughs> but I have been taking choreography classes mm-hmm. so that I can learn how to move better. Right. Um, I get stiff in my shoulders and my, my back and hips. So it's like, yeah, I have to practice that, but I, I want to try it more because I do like to dance. Mm-hmm. I love, I love it. I just want to get better at it. So this is just to push myself out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And I know that you are a big music fan. Um, and I know you've got like different sounds, especially you've grown so much from crush, which is, you know, you guys just had, you, you had your anniversary, I think 13 years, August 12th, um, from crush and it's been hit like 130 million views now on YouTube. And I'm sure it's hit by as many streams on Spotify, but, um, I know you have so many musical influences. So do you have any with moving, especially with what we've heard on therapy sessions as well? If I had any influences. Yeah. Any, that? any new uh, music that you've been listening to that kind of, oh. kind of want to emulate as well. New music that I like. Hmm. I mean, I always liked the Justin Bieber stuff. I was, I was looking at my hair. I'm like, oh, I kind of look like the old just <laughs> Justin Bieber look. That wasn't intentional, but it's just. Um, but I love. I, I think his stuff is always great. Uh, who else? Um, I liked. Uh, Why am I blanking Lizzo? I, her, some of her stuff was kind of. And influenced me, of course, Billie Eilish. Yeah, she is a trailblazer with her sound and her style, and I just love that she just is herself. She didn't try to fit anything, and that's that she created a whole new lane. Mm-hmm. And I loved that. So, um, are these also artists that you'd like to work with, to collaborate with, if you ever got the opportunity? I mean, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> yeah, if they wanted to collaborate. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I love that. I love their stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I know that um, Moving is such a great song, but then you also have Lose and Sleep, which I love so much, and then Be That For You. Mm-hmm. Are these going to all be part of an upcoming record that we can expect sometime soon? You know, I didn't know. I was just kind of releasing a song at a time mm-hmm. as, as I wrote them. That way I felt like they're more fresh. Mm-hmm. But maybe maybe I can. I, I was talking to my manager. I'm like, hey, maybe I can like add a couple of songs and then like put an EP out because I still have a couple more and I'm like, Oh, I'm running out of time this year to release them. I'm like, well, maybe I can just place them all together. So people have something for our 2021. Yeah. And I know that you have the tour also 2022 coming up. Right. So is that still happening? Do we keep praying that it stays? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's supposed to still happen. I, (laughs) I just never know because we don't know how it's going with the new Delta variant. Mm -hmm. I already, and I had some shows coming up just this month and next month that are already being postponed for next year because of the new rules and the states that they're in Mm -hmm. and just 
So I, I don't know. We're just kind of taking it a day at a, at a time. Yeah. You know, I thought I was going to be in tour last year. I thought I was going to be tour this year, this year. I'm hoping for next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we just have to make, keep, keep uh, an eye on. Yeah. On this Delta variant. Definitely. And, you know, I, you have another exciting release ahead, which is your first children's book, My Little Prayer, out this October. Um, that's inspired by your song. Congratulations. I read the book. I loved it. Uh, oh, I teared up. I, I thought it was so sweet. I'm going to give it to like my my nieces and nephews, and I just know they're going to oh. love it, too. So what made you want to write a children's book? It's so like I think it's so sweet and it's just such a thing that we need right now. Like it's such a beautiful message as well. So please tell me about it. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, that makes me really happy to hear um, that you enjoyed it. And Sarah, who did the, she, she's an Italian illustrator who illustrated the book. And um, I just, when I was a missionary, I was a missionary in Chile for two years. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of my career, I took a break. And the number one thing that I did, I mean, I, you know, I shared my faith with people and taught them about Christ and um but the number one thing that we most common was other than singing for them was teaching them how to pray. Mm-hmm. Because even though a lot of people believe there's a God and they believe in God themselves, they don't, they've, there's so many people who had never said a prayer in their life. Mm-hmm. So they didn't know how to talk to him. And I was like, Oh, they'd be afraid to. And I was like, I would love, I, I didn't write the song. I, I didn't even write the song. I had it in a dream. Mm-hmm. So, but when I, when I was like, you know what, maybe I should release this song because it'll help people know that what it's like to pray. Cause I, I felt like, you know, I didn't, I didn't try and write it. I, it just was how it was, how mm-hmm. I would have said it. Yeah. And I was like, maybe this can help people know that it's okay for them to pray and that you don't always get what you hope for. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can still talk to him and learn and, so I, uh, I, I wanted to be able to teach kids how to pray, you know, yeah. and just show them what it's like and show them that, you know, there's disappointment, but sometimes you may ask for one thing, but you end up getting something else that is yeah. so much more f- f- filling for you mm-hmm. and that God's always there and he, he does hear your prayer, no matter how small you might feel. Yeah. And so that was the hope with this book and, and, and with the song as well. Yeah. And that's the, like, that's the thing too. Like, I feel like it's, it goes, it transcends just one singular religion. I feel like it's for anyone who's spiritual, anyone who believes in God and knows that, you know, we've all had a very rough year. I feel like this was like a message all of us could have. I know like when I was reading it back, I, I was crying, even now listening to you talk, I'm tearing up because it is a very mm-hmm. beautiful message. And it is something that we do need to have because you know, life is not expected the way we want it to be. It doesn't go the way we want it to be. But, you know, for you to share that message, especially for for children who are hitting this, you know, pandemic where a lot of them are staying at home, a lot of them are not going out, it's it's good for them. I think it's just such a sweet book. And I I know that that's such a message that's so important to you. And and I'm so excited for readers to finally read it in this October. Um, So is there anything else you want readers to take away from this book? Because I know that it's such an important message for you. And you must be so excited now for the release October. (laughs) I'm so excited. I, you know, I, of course I get excited about music, but I'm just so excited for this book because I love kids. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about my nieces and my nephews. And if I have kids in the future that they'll have something that is important. I, as you know, there's nothing more important to me than my relationship with my heavenly father. And so if I can leave that, as like a history, but something that they can relate to and digest. It just, it just makes me so happy. You know, I, I want to leave people with hope and with an opportunity to have a relationship with God or however they understand what God is, you know? So, cause nothing fulfills me more than that. So You know, I love talking to you, Dave. You're so thoughtful and considerate. And, you know, before I let you go, I know that idol auditions are starting up again. And I know fans, myself included, we love seeing you connect with your season seven family. So there was a really fun TikTok of you golfing with David Cook. And I'm wondering, (laughs) do you guys hang out a lot? And who is the better golfer? You can you can tell us here. It's totally fine. (laughs) David Cook. And Cook is the much better golfer. <laughs> so he was giving me tips. I just started a few months ago. Hmm. I've only, that was probably just my third time even yeah. going. 
but um, he was giving me pointers and he's, he's really chill. You know, yeah. he, he doesn't make you feel like you suck or anything, even though I do, <laughs> but um, yeah, we don't always see each other, but we both live in Nashville. So we get to catch up every now and then it's more over, I guess, text when we do, yeah. but he's, he's always looked out for me and he's always been really great about that. Yeah. I love seeing you guys interact because I'm a huge seven is heaven fan. Like I love seeing you <laughs> so much. So I love seeing you interact with, you know, um, Brooke and with Carly and, you know, everyone. And I do want to just shift gears here slightly. Cause I know you have, you know, you voiced your opinion and you voiced your concern and you weighed in on the whole thing with Saisha. It's a devastating custody battle. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as she continues to get the support resources and tension on the case, which is so important, is there anything you'd like to expand on, you know, and share about her since you guys spent so much time together. Yeah, Saisha has always been very level-headed, very mature. She's always had this elegance and grace to her sophistication. And she's always, so I love, it It pained me to see her going through this. And I was just devastated. I was shocked because I'm like, you know, Saisha is such an intelligent, strong human being, um, a powerful woman and a powerful human. And so I was just like, there's no one better for this to happen to because the way that she can say this is not right. Mm -hmm. And um, to show people, I, I don't want to see it happen to her, but if it's going to happen, how lucky for anyone else in that position, because how fortunate, because she is look at how she's been able to show like, Hey, this is happening. This is going on and we need help because she does it with so much tactfulness mm -hmm. and with her elegance and grace that she does everything with. Um, and it's allowed people to stand by her and support her. And I, ugh, a bird just flew into my window. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but I just, you know, I'm so glad that she is strong and I just, I've, I've been praying for her and, and I'm just glad that it is gaining national attention mm -hmm. because it needs to. Yeah. And I love her. I, I, and I'm just, I look, I, I admire her so much because she's handled it so much better than I sure would have. Mm -hmm. And I think so many, any, anyone else, she's just, she's incredible. Yeah, it's it's devastating. It's heartbreaking. I, I know that we're all sending so much love to her and we're sending support and, you know, everything with action. I know that's the biggest thing. A lot of us are all rallying behind her. So, you know, David, thank you so much for your kind words. And thank you so much for just your amazing heart and blessing all of us with your talent. You really are a light. So I really mm -hmm. appreciate it. David Archuleta's new single, Move In, is out now. For more with David and all your music news, keep it locked to popculture.com for the latest.